This is a pre-recorded uh, video. Uh, it's now the 22nd of October, but this video will go up on YouTube sometime in November. I wasn't going to make a video tonight because I'm on vacation and I'll be leaving town in a couple days. But um, I was on a live stream last night with uh, Malted in Montreal, Swami Suave. And um, we were talking about um, trading some whiskeys, you know, uh, him sending me some things that he has, and I'm sending him some things that I have. Uh, two of the bottles that I was going to send him, or I'm going to send him, uh, are already opened. And so I'm going to uh, just give him samples, and away they go. He also wants to try this one here, which I haven't opened yet, but I told him that I had some. So in order to send a sample to, I have to try it. And I have to open it, basically. This is the McAllen edition number two. I know that lots of people have uh, most likely um, talked about it already and made videos about it and reviewed it and everything else. And uh, here on the inside of the box it says, Edition number three, Inspire, Select, Create. A new selection of exceptional oak casks will be chosen to create next year's edition. Join the discussion. Uh, okay, so this was from last year. I think it was in, um, yeah, sometime in 2016. I think towards the end of the year, like around, you know, September, October, November, something like that. Anyway, this here was uh, made it was a collaboration between the um, master whiskey maker Bob Dalgarno and uh, El Cellar de Can Boca or Roca, twice voted the best restaurant in the world. So what happened was they took three, three of the chefs, I guess, from the restaurant, and uh, they've got their signatures all on here. Is the combining flavors handpicked by each collaborator to represent their own distinctive personality. This characterful single malt showcases our extraordinary commitment to sourcing and selecting only the very best oak casks for McAllen. Collaboration embodies the spirit of the McAllen. Edition number two <clears throat> reflects the personalities of the Roca brothers and me, represented by our personal cask selection. Bob Dalgarno, McAllen, Master Whiskey Maker. Okay, I got their signatures on here. This is bottled at 48.2%, uh, which is right in the sweet spot, if you ask me. Okay, result of a collaboration, collectible limited edition, reflects the personality, creative spirit, blah, 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 and so on and so on. Uh, okay, cask use percent. Okay, so a lot of it is 52% of it is aged in, in butts, 21% in hogsheads, and 27% in punchins. Um, anyway, there's a bunch of stuff on here. It shows a little graph of what kind of barrels were used and so on. I'm not going to go into the details. Uh, I think I'm going to try this. Bottled at 48.2%. That, that's nice. I should have started with something lighter, but I guess I'll be starting with this right now and uh, getting the sample ready for Swami, let's uh, get this open and see what kind of impression we get from the contents. Oh, I, this is going to be like uh, 
Wow, nice and tight too. This is going to be an interesting nearly cask strength bottle. Does it say anything different on here from what it said on the other thing on the box? Okay, limited edition, collaboration, and so on and so on. Uh, okay, and here. Second in a series of annual limited releases, result of a collaboration between Bob Delgarno and so on and so on. Says it again. Surgeon General's warning, and so on. So this has gone through the states to get to Canada. Let's see what we get. Oh. right away I'm getting some okay there's dark fruits dark dried fruits there's definite sherry cask influence definite Oh, figs and dates and things like that. I'm getting spices too. And some kind of a syrupy. like corn syrup. Maybe this needs to open up a little. It's probably not chill filtered. And probably not. Oh, getting some legs. It's, uh, I don't know if you can see that. There. Got some legs happening, and they're moving down very slowly. Very slowly. It's viscous. It even smells viscous. Once again, dark fruits. I'm smelling wood too. I'm getting oak. And this is a mixture of different oaks. From what I understand, they used um, some American, some European. Yeah. Complicated sort of a blend of different casks that McAllen was aged in. Am I getting a hint of quite a bit of vanilla in there? Yeah. Vanilla and caramel along with the sherry. And the oak, notes of oak. This is a lot more Macallan than the other editions that I have. I have their uh, gold from the 1824 series and I have their double cask I think it's called double cask 12 year old this is a non-age statement
I'm getting something that resembles coconuts too. Along with the uh, dark dried fruits. I'm going to taste it neat first and see what happens. Mm. Let's cleanse my palate a bit. Do it again. I don't usually start with a whiskey this high in alcohol, but I'll give it a try. Small sips. Well, 48 is not that high. I'm getting a lot of sweetness all over my mouth and all over, and there's like a, a viscous residue coating the inside of my mouth. It's, um, it's sweet. I think they've, I don't know which kind of sherry, it's a mixture of things. Uh, Definitely getting vanilla. Fruits again, darker fruits. It says on the box that there's toffee. I'm not getting much toffee yet, but I'm getting quite a hefty, hefty dose of vanilla. If I was to let it sit for half an hour, maybe that would change things, but I can also add a little bit of water and see what happens to open it up. Just a little bit. See if that helps. With some whiskeys it does and others it does not. Okay. I didn't add that much to it. Okay. I'm getting more apple and spice. Wonder if that's changed the taste at all by adding water to it. Now there's toffee. Toffee and vanilla. I'm getting more fruity notes. Bit of cinnamon, Just a bit of cinnamon and lots of toffee. Some vanilla too with the toffee. And more fruity notes. I think I'm getting some plums and some raisins and grapes and things like that. Nice balance of toffee and fruit, vanilla. That's mostly what I'm getting on the nose. Taste again. Mm. 
Mm. On the aftertaste, there's quite a bit of toffee. The fruits seem to be light. Somewhere between pears and apples, I'm not sure. And then there's the raisins and grapes and things like that. It's quite complex. It's got a lot of flavors that I'm having trouble picking out. But this is just a first impression, right? I'll probably come back and try it again later sometime. And I have no doubts that this will get more interesting and better. As most bottles do as they go along. I figure three or four months and down to about here that's when it should be getting to its sweet spot that's when it should be getting more complex it's not opened up yet it needs to open up it needs to breathe I'm getting some of the complexity but it still seems to be locked up in there Now I'm getting more of the fruits. Very interesting blend of fruits too. Bit of spices. Vanilla and caramel. Oh, the bourbon barrels were really at work with this. And how much of that was bourbon? Uh, hogsheads. I don't even know what a puncheon is. It says that 27% of it is in punchins. Uh, I don't know. I don't know enough about this. I should have done my research, right? I don't often do that, but the legs are still hanging on the sides there and the longer I leave it the more interesting it gets that balance between the fruits and the toffee and vanilla that's fabulous Getting stronger on the nose as, as it opens up some more. Mm. Rather nice. Rather nice. There's a little bit of a sourness on the finish it's like a sweet sourness sweet and sour a little bit bitter too as on the finish the bitterness is probably from the European oak the sourness I don't know I don't know where that comes from I've picked up sourness from bourbon barrels before especially things that were exclusively aged in bourbon barrels things like uh, Highwoods 90 Canadian whiskey has a sour note to it as well but this it still still has a bit of that sourness let's try that again Yeah, to me it's a bit sweet and sour towards the end. And I don't know if a little more water would help it. I think it just needs time to open up from the bottle. 
so I can't say whether this is great or okay. There are a lot of bottles that I just open up and don't like, and then months later, they're fabulous. This, I predict, is going to be one of those bottles. I got the same thing last night. I was trying some Batch 4 Glendronic uh, Cast Strength. And when I first opened that, I was going, what? This isn't anything special. But it got better. It got really good. It's really wonderful now, about half the way down the bottle. And I can imagine this opening up to be a similar experience. Well, I'm going to send some samples of this to Swami and see what he thinks. I'll give him enough so that he can open it up and let it react with the oxygen in the air. Anyways, Sluncha. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Being unprepared like I always am, I forgot to tell you how much this cost me. Well, let's see now. Um, Macallan edition number two, one times 750 mils. It was 159.99, and with the liquor and GST, liquor tax was uh, $16, GST was $8, grand total of $184.09. There you have it. 